Market research is a scientific set of experimentations of quantitative and quantitative data analytics that will tell you the market's price elasticity, as well as your product's category, average sales in that category, observation, experimentation, purchase data analytics, surveys, focus groups, interviews, and discussions with unsatisfied customers. How do you find out if your product is worth anything in the market? This is a process called market research. We all have heard about it. We've heard it thrown around. You have MBAs who give you a giant list of everything that you need to get done. Then if entrepreneurs are just going to say, scrap it, let's just get something out that works, prove it, and go. What is the right process and what is the step-by-step -step process to help you find the best way to launch your product or optimize it profitably but for entrepreneurs? Hey there everybody, my name is Ben Moot. I help entrepreneurs launch their products, scale those products profitably online in an analytical way, because I'm an analyst. So I wanna make sure that when you put in a dollar, that marketing dollar makes a dollar or more. Make sure you like the video if you thought this was really funny or enjoyable. If you find this information informative, like the video for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe, ring that bell, because we've got a lot more content coming your way about market research, about launching your products online, so much information, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Let's get started. Market research is a step-by-step -step process that differs whether you're an MBA style type, type of business or you're an entrepreneur. It's going to differ. But what is the fastest path and how do you make this work with a way that makes sense for everyone's path? So we can all get on the same page and just say, let's get this out and prove it. Well, it all comes down to a process like this. Boom, we're gonna use a whiteboard in order to go through this, but this is the process in order to do it. You can be an MBA, you can spend years going to school to learn this and have the process, a scientific process that you can take piece by piece, you can break it down statistically in order to make the best shot at what you think is going to work in the market. Or you can take this the entrepreneurial route. Okay, in the entrepreneurial route, things are a little more gritty. It's literally just boots on the ground, get it done. Your MBA is gonna take you through a qualitative, but probably more likely a quantitative route. Okay, they want to get as much information in the numbers as possible. That means if you are Target and you're going to launch a new piece, you wanna make sure that whatever punk company you're gonna be throwing in your stores has done some of this research. So it's valuable, it's important. Yes, but if you're an entrepreneur, literally all you want to know is who is the person who you're selling this to. Give me a basic avatar for this individual. Then what they're buying already and how they are buying it. If you can give me that data, I can run with it. Now, how does this all work? There is a process, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the entire MBA process. I'm gonna show you how it all works step by step and what you really need to know as an entrepreneur. We'll give you a summary at the end so that we are good to go. Plus, I'll give you a couple of gifts at the end, so make sure you stick to the end. And if you too would like to be one of the unfashionable entrepreneurs that go against the grain, click the like button, then go and comment. We'd love to see you there. Keep watching. This is the traditional method. It goes through observation, experimentation, purchase data analytics, surveys, and focus groups. The whole process of this is meant to do it at distance from customer. They want data about the customer. They want to see graphs. They want to see all of these things as quantitative as possible. That's the process for an MBA style process of market research. Now you're gonna begin your observations which is seeing what, uh, what's happening in the market. You're gonna look at direct and indirect competitors. Now what does this mean? I hate this terminology. Once again, I'm an entrepreneur. Direct competitors, people who are selling the same product as you. Who else is selling the same product as you? Now you might be like, Ben, I'm selling something that's totally unique and it's new. Okay, that's fine. Congratulations, new iPhone creator. Love the belief that you've got. If you're doing something new, what is everyone else doing around you? You need to understand the marketplace you're about to create. Where is it coming from? So you need to understand who, you, who people are spending money with. So you need to direct competitors, people who are buying the same product. Indirect competitors, they're selling the same type of promise, okay? While the direct competitor is like, oh, we're gonna sell you this one doohickey. Indirect is, we're gonna give you more time in your day. That, how many companies give that promise? You can look at all of those competitors because they're all taking your customer's money. 
Your customer is giving them money. You might as well let them know there's a better option, you have a better product, you have a better promise, boom. That's how that works, direct and indirect for MBAs and for entrepreneurs. The next step is the traditional SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Usually you draw this in a quadrant style and on the top left you write down what strengths you have in the niche or what strengths a competitor has in the niche. What are the strengths of working in this niche? There's a lot of things you can do a SWOT analysis around. Strengths. Now what are your weaknesses is just below that in the quadrant. Next you go over to the right side of the quadrant and you have your opportunities. What opportunities are you bringing to the market or does the competitor bring to the market or is the niche waiting for that you can answer? What are those opportunities? And then the last piece at the very bottom right is the threats. What threats are out there that are going to eat your lunch? Okay, this type of analysis is extremely useful. Honestly, for most people in an entrepreneurial world, it's too analytical. A SWOT analysis will kill your brain. So I say, you know what? Understand why it's important, don't do it. Okay, understand why it's important, but don't do it if you're an entrepreneur. You need to get as close to your customer as possible. How do we do that fast? Is this making sense to you? If it is, make sure to like the video. If you're kind of lost, let me know in the comments. Like the video, comment, let me know how I can help you and let's keep going. The next piece you do is price elasticity. <laughs> Complicated word, pretty much means if your price goes up, are people still gonna buy? And if not, what drops? What is the exact drop? How do you know if that works? Usually an entrepreneur will look at a market and discover that for themselves. They'll just talk to a couple other people in the niche and go, oh, okay, cool. Observation faster. Okay, you just talk to somebody. So you don't need to do a price elasticity process, but you can. And there are a whole bunch of studies that are done out there by really expensive marketing campaign agencies in order to discover that, as well as the last piece, your market category. Now this is important for the entrepreneur as well. Your market category is important, but they teach this differently in the MBA world than I'm going to teach you. Okay, and you look at Amazon. You look at Amazon, you have their categories and subcategories. That's how the world sees market categories. Well, you're in kitchen and dining, and in kitchen and dining, you're in the following niche, and they niche you down. In the MBA world, they wanna know how much money is flowing through that category. And then they wanna know what percentage of that money you're going through, you're gonna be able to capture. Well, if we, if we just penetrate 1% of the market, oh my gosh, we'll make so much money. Yeah, do you know how rare that is? Do you know how silly of a statement that is? So few people are gonna reach 1% at the beginning. You want to talk to like less than that, but business plans are built on this, direct in competitor, SWOT analysis, price elasticity, and market category details. So much information. They build whole business plans off this and get funding. My entrepreneurial friends, <laughs> we have a faster way. This is how you need to understand your market category if you're an entrepreneur. So for entrepreneurs, there are only three markets that matter, especially when you're going to digital marketing. If you wanna go mass market, only three markets, none of these markets and categories and da 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 da. Mm, it all falls into these three. And I, this is a different way of thinking and it's because of the way digital marketing works, the way marketing works, period. Okay, this is a Venn diagram. Ooh, wow, no, this is three different markets as taught by Russell Brunson. Health, wealth, and relationships. You can find this in dot-com secrets, expert secrets. It's all over the place. He teaches it over and over and over. Health niche is not, I'm gonna make you healthy. It's, if you use this, you'll be healthy. You could sell anything as health. I'll give you a couple of examples in a moment. What about wealth? You can sell anything as a wealth product and anything as relationships. So if I were to sell you a dance course, you are going to learn how to dance. That's what I'm gonna do market research on. Cool, when I go and look, I'm not looking at just, hey, what product category would this fit in on Amazon? No, that doesn't matter, not in the online world. In the online world, it has to be number one, promising health, number two, wealth, or number three, relationships. Now, what are examples in all of these? Inside of health, that example is you can lose weight. You can get fit by doing this dance. Like you do this dance at home, we'll give you the course, we'll give you whatever you want, on-demand training, 
or on demand dance, whatever you wanna do, that is health, okay? Sell it as health. Can you sell that as wealth? Yes. Add a certification to it. You can be certified in this for your dance studio or your yoga practice or you know wherever you want. You can certify somebody that becomes a wealth promise. What about relationship? Well, I've been looking at a whole bunch of ads lately in this space. Literally, relationships, how to become more attractive. How do you be more attractive? How do you have presence? There's a sensuality to it, okay? Relationships, you can sell dance for that without getting really blurry on the lines. You can do this. So the question is, if you're gonna sell online to mass market, as an entrepreneur, you need to fit in a health promise a wealth promise or a relationship promise. Doesn't matter if your product is only for like, is really just a hobby, it has to fit in one of these. How is it going to help people in their health, in their wealth, or in their relationships? And that promise has to be blatantly honest. And when you do the market research the way you're supposed to, which you have that video at the end that you guys can watch, it gives you like an hour long training on this, it all comes down to wiring in those three, and you will see which is working best for your niche. Guess what you're gonna do? Model it. One more piece for entrepreneurs, they don't tell you how to do this as an MBA because they don't think you need to get that deep in the weeds because we have creative geniuses that we've hired. Ugh. This is why they waste so much money. The next piece you need to do in observation is you need to go and look at who is selling, you've made that list, you need to go and see how they are selling it. This is basic ad research. Okay, I have a whole video on it, okay? I have like an hour long video on how to do all of this as an entrepreneur. All right, you guys can watch that. Now, the how is very specific. You go into Google, you go into Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, you look at who is advertising, and you go and you see how are they advertising? What pain points are they hitting? That will tell you who your avatar is automatically. Anything that I do on preparation on who is my avatar will be predefined by the research. If I can do the research, I don't need any of the MBA stuff because they've already told me everything I need to know. How am I going to launch? These are the ads I'm gonna use. These style of ads work on this platform. I go to this style of a page that look like this. I have a launch plan, that's my blueprint. I just listed my competitors, I did a little bit about market category, understanding health, wealth, relationships, and what promise I'm providing, which is also defined really by understanding not just who is selling, but how they're selling it. Because how they're selling it will literally paint the picture on how you can shortcut the entire process. Tell me what I can do that will help flesh this out a little bit better the next time we go over this topic, because this isn't going to be the only time. This is what I built my entire program over. Like the video, comment, let me know how I can help you. The next piece is experimentation. Now, inside of experimentation, MBAs and entrepreneurs do this very differently. An entrepreneur's entire job is to get this thing up and selling as fast as possible in the ugliest form fashion. Just get the right copy on the page, get the right sales pieces, the direct marketing aligned, and see if you can start making sales. See if the customers want this. If they don't, move on to the next thing. <laughs> Change the pitch, adjust. It's the easiest way to do it and you don't have to spend thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars for a market research package to help you understand a whole bunch of numbers that you're gonna glaze over when you look at, okay? Go and sell the darn thing. Now, in the MBA world, they're gonna go, oh, we shouldn't sell something. That's gonna involve marketing department, it's gonna involve the sales department, it's gonna involve the supply chain department. We, we can't do that. So we're gonna stay away from selling, the number one way to check if this works, and we're gonna go with surveys and focus groups. They're gonna spend a major amount of time paying people to get in the door, paying people to answer surveys. Why? Because they're praying that these people are honest, number one, and number two, they're praying these people will give them enough data as if they were making a sale, and they can gather a little bit more data around it. That's their hope, that's their dream. I hope it works out for them because in truth, selling is really the number one piece because 
after you do all the sales, after you, if you do the quantitative surveys and the focus groups and make sure it's all statistically sound, which is a whole universe of statistics in and of itself, you don't want to be their entrepreneurs. The next piece is processing data analytics. When somebody buys, do you know if it's working? How do you know if it's working? Like, yeah, I got a sale. Sweet. What percentage was that? Where did that come from? How did it work? There is a whole world of data analytics for sales that will define whether or not it's working for you. I've actually shot a video that'll teach you how to know if your process is working. I give you all the industry standard numbers if you're doing things right. Okay, so if you're doing things right, it'll give you those numbers. If you're underneath, you put in your numbers, it will tell you whether or not you're doing it right. So check out that video. Super powerful, you're gonna love that one. You can watch that at the end of this. So understand your sales data, break it down. This was part of my job once upon a time. I was a data analyst coming out of college, okay? I like living in supply chain. I was a pricing and demand analyst. And this world is great if you are massive business if you are afraid to put something out there, but really you have so much flexibility as an entrepreneur to be able to create something and test it and tweak. You're gonna be afraid to make a mistake, but the mistake is gonna cost you what? Maybe 800 to thousand dollars just testing it to see if it works, a couple of hours, maybe a week to get that up versus a $25,000 research package. You tell me what you would rather pay money on. Come on. The next piece that they do is they do surveys which you can do as well. They do like, they will do a survey, they'll qualify it, kind of like we talked about in experimentation. They'll do that after purchase data as well as before. Now we teach you to do something like that in our little world from Ryan Lebesque. Ryan Lebesque teaches you the ask method. Okay, it's a full process on how you ask questions in order to get it to work. Ryan teaches one in ask method. Russell Brunson teaches his own as well. Two different ideas on how to do it. I love them all, but not time to go in depth on that here. Okay, the last piece is focus groups, structured focus groups. They want to receive specific answers like, here is a morsel. Does it taste good? How would you rank this? Satisfactory? Unsatisfactory? It takes all the love out of everything. And this, oh, this is why I had such a hard time in the MBA world. If you were to go this long route of observation and research, yes, I feel smarter for doing it. Yes, I feel like I'm making a better decision. But where's the human element? Where? There's nothing human about it. I've machined it. I've turned it into a complete science. I've taken the entire soul out of it. When I'm talking to these people in focus groups or in surveys, since when do I have the opportunity to talk about them with their families? When do I have the opportunity to learn if they're in debt? What are they not sleeping about? I can ask any range of question to somebody who has purchased or didn't purchase if I run a simple test. As an entrepreneur, the fastest way to grow is to get as close to your customer as possible. Learn about this customer. Who are they? Who are they buying from? How are they buying from them? You can interview them, yes, absolutely. I recommend basic research. Make sure you're doing the right promise for your market and then take it to the next level. After that, all you have to do is experiment with sales and watch your data and you can get all the training on that now. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This is literally just the honest truth. You guys can do the long route, the simple route. You choose. You've got the tools. Thank you for watching. If you like this at all, make sure to subscribe, like the video. We've got two other videos for you. One is on data analytics and the other one is this full process step-by-step -step for entrepreneurs. Enjoy them both. I will see you guys soon.